Thank you so much, Pathfinders. That was nice. That was beautiful. Thank you, Sister Murley, for all the time and energy and effort and work and love that went into making that song and this day special. I am so grateful. I'll tell you, little awards and paper don't give the true story of what it takes to be a part of the Pathfinders and to help out. And we are truly grateful as a church family. I know I'm grateful as a parent for all the work that goes into making sure that the Pathfinders are something special here in our church. I'd like to invite you to bow your heads and pray with me for just a moment this morning. Father, thank you that we have this time to come together. Please bless, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We are the Pathfinders strong. Am I on? Can we try it? Did that work? I flicked the switch. Yep. Yeah. Testing, one, two, three. Testing, one, two, three. And flick it again. Is that one, two, three? Nope. Nope. All right. So we're going to try this one. Are we on now? Testing, one, two, three. There we go. All right. Very good. We are the Pathfinders strong. Yeah, now, it was nice when the Pathfinders were coming in, they were singing a song, right? And some of you are familiar with it, but I, let me just read the words. It, it was officially nominated as the song in 1949. And that song goes like this. Oh, we are the Pathfinders strong. The servants of God are we. Now, listen to these lyrics, because with all the lyrics going on out there, our young people today, and I saw many of you singing this in harmony, very nice. The servants of God are we, faithful as we march along in kindness, truth, and pathfinders, what is it? Purity. Purity. A message to tell to the world. Oh, I like that. A message to tell to the world, a truth that will set us free. King Jesus the Savior is coming back for who? For you and me. Well, let me tell you what. It will take strong Pathfinders to take that message to the world. Amen? See, the Pathfinders started really as a group that came out of what was known as the AY, the Adventist Youth. So about 1901, 1902, right in that area, they formed together what was called the AY, Adventist Youth. And they would meet, they got together, they said, we need to have a curriculum, we need to have studies, we need to have things together for our young people. And year after year, it grew and got bigger and bigger. And finally, out of California, they got together and they said, we're going to have something called Path. Finders. They can find the path in life. They can go through. Now, it's similar to what the scouts do, except we have a stronger spiritual emphasis. Amen? We have a strong emphasis on helping our young people learn about Jesus, not just about other things out there. So the Pathfinder is strong. How strong are we? Well, give me a moment, because we're going to brag a little bit. Amen? So we developed what was called a camporee. For those who are not familiar with that, a camporee is when the Pathfinders get together and camp out. And so they had a camporee and a conference, then it became a union, then they did a division. And a few years ago, almost 20 now, they went to a place with the director, Ron Whitehead, to Oshkosh, Wisconsin. Now, Oshkosh is a city that's known for this large aviation field that could accommodate a lot of people. And they had their first camporee. Thousands, tens of thousands of kids come. And then every five years, they say, let's do it again. And they had themes from Joseph and Daniel. And this past summer, our group went up to Oshkosh. And that's why when you hear people say, oh, we went to Oshkosh. What do they talk about? It's not Oshkosh, be gosh, the kids thing, which that's nice. That's not what I was talking about. It's Oshkosh, Wisconsin, where the camporee was. And this year, you ready? We had 56,000 in attendance for this five-day event, which, if I may add, makes it one of the largest grouping of young adults and kids for five days in the world. Can I get an amen? amen? The largest. Now, what else did we do? Well, we had people from 102 countries come and be part of this program. 102. Isn't that cool? And the kids got to see it. They were walking around seeing people from everywhere, all over the world. But we did more than that. We made money. Amen? Pathfinder Strong. How strong? Well, for that event... We generated $20 million through that event. Hold on, it gets better. Right across the street, there is a Walmart. And that Walmart, on the Monday that began, had total sales of one day of $1 million. Because of who? That's how we roll. 
Pathfinders all up in Walmart buying stuff so quick they couldn't restock the shelves. It made it the world's busiest, profitable, one-day Walmart. Thanks to who? There we go. Well, we did more than that. We made money. We made Walmart a lot of money on that day. Thank you, church family. We were there a lot, weren't we? Going over to Walmart, water, and anyway. We did something else that was pretty cool. We had contacted a friend of mine, Peter, call, contacted the Genesis Book of World Records, and they said, we want to set a record. We want to have the largest human cross on record. So the whole time they were on the corner selling the things, getting people ready. So on the day, they got everybody lined out. You go online, Google it, you'll see it. It is amazing. So let me give you the numbers here. 13,309 people all stood together like little penguins in Alaska with their little blue suit on and made the record is set now. Pathfinders hold it as the largest human cross ever. Now, oh, that is amazing. We also had 1,311 people baptized, of which one of our Pathfinders was baptized there at that event. I had my first baptism at Pathfinders. Thank you. That was awesome. That was nice. You see that online, too. That, you can check it out there. We are the Pathfinder strong. Now, those are some amazing numbers, but it's not just about those amazing numbers because, you see, the Pathfinders is about educating our young people to learn about Jesus. The program that Pathfinder has is amazing. It is so thorough. It is so intense that it, when I was a kid, when I, was, I used to go to Adventist school when I was little, they had curriculum from the Pathfinders that I did in school learning because we want to educate. We want our kids to know about Jesus. Not only do we want them to know about Jesus, but we want them to have manners. I knew it would take a little while to get there. We want them to have respect for their elders, amen? And I like, because this, this, this carefree, I got an opportunity, uh, unfortunately, because I was sick, but I got the opportunity to sit around and watch the directors work. And let me tell you something. Our Pathfinder director, Murley, has taught our kids to have manners. I would like you to witness one of the kids come up into line, snatch a plate, snatch the food, and walk off and see what happens. Have one of them come up there and say, I'm hungry. I want my food now and see what happens. Oh, that doesn't fly. Oh, excuse me. You can wait in line. You can say please. You can say thank you. You can wait now. The food was amazing. I appreciate that. I know, Merle, your sister's here. I'm going to brag a little bit. They told me that these pancakes were going to be amazing. And I'm like, well, how amazing can a pancake be, right? Milk, flour, egg, stir it up, cook it up, eat it, syrup. The syrup makes the pancake. Oh, not this time. They finally got up there. And teaching respect as pastor, I had the first in line. She brought me over smiling. Regina said, these pancakes are for you, pastor. Teaching respect. I like that. And I took a bite into that. And I tell you, sister, I'm a changed man. <laughs> I thought... I thought I had had pancakes before. Now, don't, no disrespect to IHOP. I love IHOP. It's amazing. Brother Tony, it's right up there. Number two. But when I bit into that pancake, I was a changed man. For those moments, my cold had left me. My tiredness had left me. I had entered into the world a Pathfinder strong. We feed our Pathfinders Pathfinder food like that, pancakes like that. There's nothing they can't do. A message of terror to the world, they take Jesus running on pancakes. That was nice. Teach our children the love of Jesus. Teach our children all of the things that are there to learn. They have honors. They have events. They have things to do. I'm going to do something. I haven't, I haven't prepped them. I'm going to ask Joy and, and Lucas. You two have your sash. Can you two come up for just a moment? I want you guys to look at something real quick here. What they have is this black sash. And on the sash, they have what is called honors. And so there are little patches on here. And she has patches along the side. Luke is here. Put that under there. They have patches on here. And what these patches represent are classes that they've done things that they have learned how to do so if you have a pathfinder and they have on there like first aid you know they can put a band-aid on you if you need it you see on there some of them have cooking they have one here about sharks so if you're in the water and the sharks are coming and you need to identify that shark as you're swimming call a pathfinder <laughs> come over here what shark is that oh that's the shark if you get out of the water now that's what they're able to do 
and they have all of these things on here. They've learned about bugs. They've learned about spiders and cars. Now, I was told, I missed out on this, uh, Bobby, they used to have an honor called bomb-making honor. Oh, yeah. Well, we as a church decided the time has come for us to pull that one off the shelf. So you can't get that one anymore. Amen. See this? Thank you, guys. You can sit down. This is educating our young people with things that are not just out in the world. Because, listen, the devil is trying to educate our children, is he not? The devil is trying to teach our children. He's trying to teach them disrespect. Trying to teach them that God is not important. Try to teach them that you can treat women one way. And you can treat the person of this color that way. And you can disobey your parents. And you don't have to listen to authority. Pathfinders come in and say, no, 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 no. We want a generation of young people. Which, by the way, the Seventh-day Adventist Church said about 40% of our young people are in Pathfinders. I want to encourage you that we have 100% participation. This is amazing. They do incredible things in this class because we're trying to educate them to be leaders of tomorrow, Amen. teaching them to be Christians of tomorrow. So Pathfinders, I don't know where you're going tomorrow, wherever you may go, wherever you may, God leads you. Don't forget what you have been learning in Pathfinders. We know for a fact that kids that stay in Pathfinders have a greater chance of staying in church. Amen? Amen. Doesn't we want that for our kids? Yes, it's hard. Life is rough. They're going to have difficulties, but we want to educate them. Give them the tools. Give them the opportunity to deal with the things in life, to be able to be able to do what the song says, to be Pathfinder strong. A message to tell to the world that Jesus is coming back. Oh, not only do we seek to educate them, we have a class system, friend, companion, explorer, ranger, voyager, guide, master guide, and you get to go through those based on age and in school. Each year they advance to the next one. They learn all of these things. By the time they become master guides, they're able to take on everything. Amen, master guides? We have master guides in training. They're so excited to be a master guide. Praise the Lord. We're going to train them up so they can lead out and take over. It's going to be nice. You get the opportunity to raise all these children. Amen? Amen. Amen. The other thing we get to do is we get to help our young people have an identity. You see, today they look nice, don't they? Now, if you've been a Seventh-day Adventist for any amount of time, when you see the uniform, you know what you're looking at. You see, we need to have our young people have an identity. If you have your Bibles, turn with me, please, to Jeremiah chapter 1, our scripture reading. You see, Jeremiah was a young man when God came and spoke to him, and he said some words to him, and he was actually calling Jeremiah to be a prophet. He was calling Jeremiah to an incredible message. He was calling Jeremiah to be strong in the Lord. And notice right at the beginning of the chapter what God says to Jeremiah. Verse 7, but the Lord, Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 7, but the Lord said to me, do not say I am a youth. See, there's a lot of people think that I'm not old enough. Pathfinders, you're old enough. As a matter of fact, adventurers, we're having a great day next week. Adventurers, you're old enough. We are old enough. Do not say I'm a youth. For you shall go to all to whom I send you, and wherever I command, and whatever I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of their faces, check this promise out. For I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. I don't care what comes my way, I know I'm in his hand. Did you listen to that song today? It was amazing, beautiful, has identity. The uniform is for a purpose because when you have a uniform, it tells people who you are and what you're about. Now I brought an extra uniform. Now I wanna share with you and see if you know when I pull out this uniform, what this represents. Now let me just say, for some, some people, I, I apologize. This uniform is, is an amazing uniform for a lot of people and, and, and you know, they have like 28 more than anybody else championships and everything and, and that's okay, everybody else that's, so you'll see. So this uniform right here, when you see this, oh, what does this represent? Does anybody know what this means? What does this mean? New York Yankees. Now some of you may even know the number. What's that number in the back? Do you guys remember number two? Oh, a man named Derek Jeter who has retired. Oh, I tell you what, you put this on and there's like, oh. Let me just hold it close for just a moment. Oh. Yeah, you know, look, New York Mets, I know some of you in here, we love you. 
It's okay. And, and there's others that have gone outside of New York, and <laughs> we love you too. And it's okay, you can buy one of these in any Modell store and be a part of the team. Come on up in here. This is a uniform. Now let me do one more. Now if I bring out this uniform. Oh, anybody from South America should know what this uniform is. Oh uh, yeah? See, that was the greatest baseball team. My wife, who is from Brazil, has the greatest what? Soccer team. What team is this? Brazil. And I even got one with one of the greatest. I, I wasn't old enough to get Pele. But number two? Oh. Now, make sure you understand this is the original Ronaldo, Not Cristiano from Portugal. This is the Ronaldo from Brazil. Number nine. Number awesome. You see, when that uniform is on, you know, when I wear that, people look at me, I know, wear that Yankees. When we wear this uniform, it's to give us identity. I put this on this morning, was all happy. Get to wear my uniform. Now, some of the older ones are at the place where I can't wait to take it off. <laughs> and we understand that. Some of them you watch, is they're marching out. If Merle's not there, they will be pulling it off as they're walking out. And that's okay, because in their heart, we've already stamped Jesus. So they're going to go through their phase. When they're little, they can't, they can't wait to put the uniform on. You see, the little adventure had to be up in here. And then you go to the phase where, I don't want to wear it. And then you come back to the phase where, I can't wait to wear it. Look at this. Everybody's looking so nice. They march in. Gives us a purpose, identity. It associates us with something called Pathfinders, which is an amazing program. Do you know the Catholic Church wrote an article about the, the program of Pathfinders? It says it's one of the best at educating young people about Jesus in the church. Amen. Wow. You can find a lot of information out there. Why? Because it gives us identity. When you put on all of these things, you know that you're something. You belong to something. And each one of the Pathfinders, I want you to know you are a part of the family. You are a part of something great. You are a part of something that was designed by God, led by God, and will be completed by God if we stay with Him. And that's the final thing I want to share with you. You see, the Pathfinders are strong because Pathfinders give hope. Pathfinders give hope. People are in distress, one Arthur wrote. They feel oppressed, forgotten, ignored, abused, hurt, and mistreated. People are willing for a hope that has been promised to them for generations. People are waiting for a hope. They wait, but they see no signs of hope. They suffer, and still nothing comes. But Pathfinders, remember the song we sang? It's a message to give to the world a truth that will set us free. And what's that truth? King Jesus is coming back. Brothers and sisters, that's our hope. That's what we go for. We didn't go to the camporee just to eat pancakes. As, well, kind of went to there to eat pancakes, yes. And we didn't go there just to see everybody else, and that was nice, but it was there to fellowship with like people, 56,000 young people who want to follow Jesus. Now, they're on different levels in their life. Amen, I understand that. But they were there. You can say, well, some of them were brats, but they were brats there. You can say, well, some of them did this and tore things up, but they were tearing it up there. They have an opportunity to meet Jesus there. So if you see a kid in a uniform as a little off base, say a prayer for them and realize they got the uniform on. They're trying to get there. We need to help them. We need to pray for them and instruct them. I don't think any of the directors would mind if you see a Pathfinder out of line go up there and say, ooh, is that what you're supposed to do? It was funny last night because they were practicing and they started getting all restless and everything. And Merle goes, is that what it means to walk softly in the sanctuary? And you're like, well, no, I guess not. Because <laughs> we're educating. We're helping them to have identity. We're helping our young people, our Pathfinders, to have hope. Hope? that King Jesus, our Savior, is coming back for you and for me. Hope that whatever takes place, whatever happens, I am in his hand. Amen. Brothers and sisters, pray for our pathfinders. Lift them up in prayer. If you've got family at some other place that have pathfinders, pray for them. Pray for our leaders that are helping out. 
Because it takes time. It takes commitment. It takes spending of your life forces, your money, to be able to be there and help. And it's not all glamorous either. I remember watching Francisco at our campery. He, he was there. He's like, and Francisco, I love him. He's so nice and calm, so pleasant. Just come in there. Hey, pick that chair up. <laughs> and before he could sit down... Hey, pick that chair up. <laughs> he gets back before he can sit down, and in his mind, he's wondering, am I not saying the right words? I said, hey, pick that chair up, and the Pathfinder is registering, hey, I got to get out of here. <laughs> but because he loves and cares for them, he says, hey, pick that chair up. He didn't go over there and slap him. Which I know many of you in your mind thinking, oh, that boy, that girl, they just need a good whipping. Back in the day, daddy'd get the belt. No, no, he just called me, hey, pick that chair up. And I watched him, Bobby, you know, right? Every day, dear Francisco, hey, <laughs> pick that chair up. <laughs> the chairs were everywhere. So that's the education part. That takes Jesus' time to be able to go in there. Because you know what most of us would do? Hey, pick up that chair. No, you're not picking it up. I'm done. I'm out. Goodbye. God bless you. I've raised my kids. I don't have kids anymore. I don't care. They're your kids. You come tell your kid to pick up that chair. I done told him 10 times and he don't pick up the chair. Forget the chair. When you need a chair, the chair's where you left it because you didn't pick it up. I have no more time for it. Walk away. Walk away. No. He's a master guide. Got Jesus up in him. He just calmly walks over there. Hey, pick up the chair. <laughs> and slowly, 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 it clicks in their little minds. Hey, <laughs> I'm supposed to pick up the chair. <laughs> okay. Oh, now I understand. He's even modeled it for them. He even demonstrated this is how you pick up the chair. You pick it up, fold it up, set it there, and, but it, it'll come. It'll come, but you see, when we give up, who's going to do it? When you walk away, who's going to do it? So, we are the Pathfinders strong. Thank you, Pathfinders. Thank you, leaders. Thank you for all that you've done, all the time and energy you've put into making it special. Thank you, parents. Thank you, church. What a blessing to have. And remember the words that God spoke to Jeremiah. Do not be afraid of their faces, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. And like the song we sing, I am in his hand. And when I am in his hand, there is nothing that God can't do for me, with me, through me, to help send a message to the world that Jesus is coming soon. Amen. Before we finish, I'd like to ask uh, Sister Nelson if she'd come up. And I want to invite Merle if she would please come up too. Merle has been our Pathfinder Director for, for many years. And we have some folks here today that want to present her. Merle, if you would please come up here. Uh, camera. Emra. See? <laughs> They, we, we train them forever, amen? Uh, just like Francisco, very patient, very kind. Camera. All right. Do we have some families that were coming up? All right, all the Pathfinder parents, if you guys would like to uh, stand up. Um, on behalf of the Pathfinders, we want to publicly thank Merle for her tireless, selfless commitment to uh, leading our children for the past six years. Um, Merle is um, just a wonderful leader, and she shared pre uh, precious memories about her own childhood and growing up in Pathfinders um, and the, the valuable role that it played in her life. Um, and she's carried those values throughout her entire life, and we're, we've been blessed for the past six years to have her share those values with our children. Um, it takes a special leader to truly connect with the youth, as Merle has, and um, she's been respectful to our children. She's loved them. She's been firm. Um, and she's taught them many life lessons. And the most important one is bringing them closer to Jesus and letting, them, letting our children know that um, he loves them in spite of. Um, 
we want to thank we also want to thank you for your dedication and may God continue to bless you as you whatever endeavors you uh, go on into so we thank you so much and we love you amen 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 say thank you um, I'm very selfish I do I do this because I love the kids and it makes me feel good to love them Amen. and I have former Pathfinders here I see Amanda I have so many of them and I'm happy to still be a part of their lives and have them be a part of mine you've all made me better Amen. and I would encourage people to volunteer with youth activities if you like children. <laughs> if you don't like children, there are other ministries where you can help. Join one of them. But if you like children, because they're so funny and wonderful and talented and strong and kind. They have strong opinions, and that's okay. And they go through stages. And we have to recognize it doesn't mean they're leaving church. They're going through a stage. So what? Didn't you? Weren't you a child once? Amen. But we forget, you know? We get older and all of a sudden, you know, you're looking at that 50 years. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> what, what? I meant 30. I meant yeah. 30. 35. And, yeah, okay, 35. 35. 35. Thanks. 35. Thanks, sir. So, and, you know, and you start to want to forget. So I would encourage you to work with them. And remember, it keeps you young. And they're not perfect, but neither are we. Aren't we still trying? Why are we here? Amen. So don't judge them any more harshly than you would judge yourself. Amen. Love them. That's what they need. It says that 70% of them will leave the church. I challenge you to break that. Amen. And Amen. don't allow that to be the case here or anywhere else. Right. So thank you again, Pastor, Amen. church board, church board, who has given me every single thing I have ever wanted. Amen. I appreciate you so much, and I love all these young people, and I'll always be around. You can still reach out to me. I just I can't do it anymore because time and my work doesn't allow it, and I want to spend more time with my husband and my children and Amen. with my work. Amen. And I want to thank my, my sister. I see who's here. She was my Pathfinder director my entire life, so she taught me everything I know, <laughs> so it's all her fault. I just can't make her pancakes, though. <laughs> When she went home, the pancakes were gone, the pan and the eggs gone. were no it good. Was it, was, it, was, it was a sad day. Pastor got even <laughs> sicker. It was terrible. We tried our best, but we just didn't stir the eggs. We didn't stir the eggs. So thank you. Thank you all very, very much. Amen. I love you. Thank you. Amen. Amen. God bless. Yes, this is our pancake maker up here, and um, if you've not had it, I'm sorry. You just, your life is not quite complete, but that's, trust us, we ate plenty for you. And we fed people from other countries, we fed uh, the conference, yes, we, we were a part, uh, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you, thank you folks, thank you so much. Big shoes to fill, but we have been praying and we've had someone accept the opportunity to work with us. So I'm gonna invite Miss Terry, if you'll come for just a moment so we can introduce you as our new Pathfinder Director. Again, I apologize for our plaques. They were, uh, anyway, but uh, Miss Terry, if you'll come for just a moment, we have a Pathfinder director that's going to continue and working with our young people here. Uh, we're grateful for the prayer and willingness to be a part of the program. And so, Terry, thank you for coming and being here with us today. You see she already has her uniform on, been a part of Adventures for many years, been a part of Pathfinders for many years, and very grateful that she is accepted to position. And so, uh, did you have a little speech you want to give? 
<laughs> no? All right. So <laughs> I'd like to just say, please continue to pray as we press forward, knowing that God is in control. It's bigger than us. This is his program, and we are just simply trying to do what we can. Yes. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyway. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Amen. At this time, we'll have our conclusion. So we will have our, where's my bulletin? We're time for our closing hymn. Oh, we do, yes, our closing song. So invite Emilio to come as we conclude our service today.